I've taken hundreds of different kinds of pills in my life. What? I'm talking about different kinds of supplements. I did actually outline all the supplements that I've ever taken in an Excel spreadsheet. And the final number was at 181. So in this video, I'm going to outline the top five best supplements of all time, the top 10 that do work and do give you benefits, and the top 10 that don't work. It's showtime. So I did count how many different kinds of compounds do I remember have ever taken and I put them in this Excel sheet. I got 181. There's probably maybe like a bit more or something like that, but uh, these are the ones that I remember. And I've taken yeah, pretty much all the like most renowned supplements like allicin, calcium, alpha ketoglutarate, search 6, NMN, uh, natokinase, maca, the seed probiotic, astaxanthin, fish oil, vitamin D3. I'm not going to go through the entire list, obviously, like alpha GPC, urethin A, berberine, glutathione, resveratrol, molecular hydrogen, and the list goes on and on until 181 and I'm definitely not taking them all the time so here are the top five the best supplements of all time that I think are backed up by the most research and what I also have noticed to have the biggest effect on my own health these top five supplements are glycine NAC creatine TMG and collagen now these supplements appear on my lists of best supplements pretty much regularly and there's a reason for that these are the most research backed supplements the most evidence backed supplements currently right now when it comes to like just overall and and health span. Glycine and NAC have dozens of human clinical trials showing that they reduce the hallmarks of aging and improve functional outcomes. The main benefits of glycine and NAC have to do with increasing glutathione, but glycine alone has other longevity benefits related to methionine restriction and autophagy. Creatine is the most researched supplement of all time, sports performance first and foremost, but also cognition, methylation, and bone density. TMG or trimethylglycine also has many studies showing that it helps with methylation, lowering homocysteine, which is good for cardiovascular disease, and even improving exercise performance. And collagen peptides also have multiple human clinical trials showing that it helps with slowing down skin aging, improving skin hydration and skin elasticity. And your skin collagen content starts decreasing in your 20s already, so it's pretty much one of those supplements you want to take all your life. Feel how soft my skin is. But obviously there's dozens of other supplements that do work, it's just that whether or not you should take them depends on your particular situation. And here are the top 10 supplements that do work and have benefits. First up we have vitamin D3 which uh, obviously helps with raising your vitamin D levels and vitamin D supplementation has been found to be associated with reduced mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease mortality. Vitamin D3 is best taken together with vitamin K2 because it helps with vitamin D3 utilization and storage. K2 is also important for bones and cardiovascular disease health. Glucosamine is a supplement that helps with the joints and cartilage and we have multiple studies showing glucosamine use is associated with reduced mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease mortality. Inositol and chromium are nutrients that help with blood sugar regulation and lipids and using both inositol and chromium has been found to improve insulin resistance in diabetes and people who have impaired glucose tolerance. Thiamine or vitamin B1 is a vitamin without which you will get diabetes eventually. Thiamine deficiency rapidly induces insulin resistance and impairs glucose tolerance. Magnesium is the master mineral that partakes in hundreds of different processes inside the body. The issue is that low magnesium status and magnesium deficiency greatly increases your risk of heart disease and other ailments. And using magnesium has been found to be beneficial for sleep heart function and raising magnesium status. Berberine is a good supplement if you want to improve your blood sugar regulation and lipid profile. Melatonin, the sleep hormone, partakes in many longevity processes in your sleep and supplementing melatonin can have some anti-aging effects. Hyaluronic acid is another beneficial supplement for skin and skin hydration. But most of the supplements out there don't actually work or they have limited evidence that they do have some benefits. So here is the list of top 10 supplements that I think that aren't worth it. Resveratrol is considered to be like a longevity supplement, but there is limited evidence in humans that it would work. Resveratrol does appear to benefit diabetes and lipid profile, but it also has a few side effects for health span, such as reducing VO2 max, reducing muscle mass and muscle strength, and testosterone. High dose antioxidant supplementation with vitamin E and vitamin A has been found to be actually associated with increased mortality risk. So that's why for a person who doesn't have any inflammation like me, then it's not really worthwhile to use high dose antioxidant supplements. Iron in excess causes oxidative stress and calcium in excess causes calcification. So unless you are low in iron or calcium, then you shouldn't really supplement these. Pre-workouts with caffeine are just too high in caffeine and they will certainly have a total net negative effect on your health. I would much rather choose pre-workouts that don't have caffeine. Most multivitamins are also just stacked with different kinds of compounds that you might not need. For example, if it has too much iron or calcium, then it's a net negative. Instead of taking a multivitamin, I would much rather target specific nutrients that you need. And 
get the most of your vitamins and minerals from your diet. The same applies to herbal supplements. We don't have that much evidence showing that many of these different herbal supplements work. It might be better that you get the herbal supplements from your food and add herbs to your diet. Testosterone boosters are something that generally work only if you have low testosterone levels. If your testosterone levels are in a normal or high end, then you're not going to see any additional benefits to that. So as you can see, out of these hundreds of supplements out there, there's only like a dozen or so that are kind of worthwhile to take. You don't need to take hundreds of supplements every day, especially if you have a good diet. But there are certainly the top five that I would say that pretty much everyone would benefit from. And from the top 10 worthwhile supplements that do work, there's also a handful that I think many people would benefit from adding to their stack. If you want to check out my current supplementation routine, then check out my other video where I covered the supplement routine that lowered my biological age by 12 years. But thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.